Who me? Strike a spark and get it early. I know that my redeemer lives. Glory, hallelujah. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. Glory, hallelujah. Shout on great on clear gaining ground. Glory, hallelujah. The dead's alive and the lost is found. Hey guys, welcome to, oh, I don't have to yell. I'm still getting used to these mics. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to the JRK podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to uh, like, subscribe, share with a friend. We are kicking off um, episode four of season two with my good buddy, Daniel Stanton. How are you today, I'm sir? doing really well. Good. Really, do. really glad it's almost May. It is. <laughs> Come May. Yeah. It, we will get there. Yeah. Summertime. I love it. I know. It's warming up. We're here in Daniel's backyard. And um, I guess I, I got to tell you, Daniel, um, you and I, we've known each other for, you know, we, we were talking 18 years now. And over the past, I don't know, since we moved back to Idaho, I guess, I've run into you three or four times. And I got to tell you, every time... Uh, I noticed that you're not just going through the motions. And as well as, I'll say this too, you're a man of means. So it's, so it's you're, you're getting stuff done, but you're also looking into the future. And um, I'm not trying to butter you up at the beginning of the, of the conversation, but guys, today we're going to talk a lot about Daniel and his background. Um, but also, I just, I, I noticed that you, um, you're not just checking boxes. You're they, now, now. There's a lot of people who are, who are visionaries, and they have zero follow through. Their head is constantly in the clouds. And I've been, I've been this guy. I've been accused of being this guy, and um, and I've also been the guy, who is just checking the boxes. Now, there's a lot of very successful people in business, in the arts, in finance. Not necessarily in the arts as much, because that, that does require some of that creativity. But some people get in, get in there, they put their nose on the grindstone, they get in their lane, and they just grind it out. And, and they're successful. And what I noticed about you was, you got a lot of both. <laughs> you're, looking at, you're looking into the future, and you're also a big time doer. And we're gonna talk about a lot of the, the different things you have going on. Um, and, and hopefully, I do want to have you back because we're, we're not even going to get into so many of the different topics that you're researching and you're studying and you're learning about and you're podcasting on and you're, and you're yeah. doing all these things, you're learning. And we're not even going to touch on 90% of those today. We're just going to talk about you and, and some of your ventures and, and, uh, and your businesses. Um, but anyway, all that being said, guys, I'm excited to have Daniel on. Yeah. And uh, I think this is going to be beneficial for all of us. If you're from around Idaho, uh, Lubbock, um, probably more than that, you you definitely have heard of the Stans. You probably know Daniel personally, and so I thought it would just be really uh, beneficial uh, for all of us. Yeah. So um, now that I'm done, just uh, you know, blowing <laughs> hair up your skirt, uh, I, I can handle it. Oh, go, no, no, oh, go, yeah, oh, it's tough. It's my cross to bear. <laughs> um, it's because Stacy keeps me grounded. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, and that's what that, that's what I want to know. So uh, let's let's bring your wife into this. Uh -oh. Tell me, tell me who is Daniel? Since she's not here, I can lie. Yeah, <laughs> and we won't know. Uh, I, I, well, that people out there will probably know. No, that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, tell me about where you're from. Yes. Um, tell us, you know, your family, your kids. Uh, and I want to know about your wife and where y'all met and, and yeah. all of that good stuff. Just start at the bottom, go to the top, wherever you want. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes you think your, your story is, is uh, 
not interesting, huh? But I love to hear other stories. But I love Idaloo. I love this yes. town because my, my, both my sets of grandparents uh, came here in the 30s. Yes. Yeah. And, and y'all are going on the fifth generation, right, with your that's right. grandkids. If uh, Justin's oldest daughter, Joan, turned five this uh, April. Yes. And she starts kindergarten next year. If, that's, if so, that'll be the fifth generation to go to Idaloo. Beautiful. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Yeah, and what you say about the uninteresting stories, you know, I was, there's a guy, they, they did a reissue of a book called Men in Marriage, and it's an author named George Gilder. But he's also the author behind Supply Side Economics under Ronald Reagan. And um, he did an interview where he was just talking, he was praising the, the uninteresting stories. The families that don't leave their hometown, that they build a legacy, they build a heritage, they raise their children right. to know the Lord, to work hard, to have children, these things. And that's, and that's another reason why I see all of those things in you. And it, so do not bemoan your story. It is beautiful. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it, is, it is so American and it is so West Texan especially. And so... Anyway, I'm a West Texas, this is going to be a recurring theme. I'm a West Texas exceptionalist. So if y'all aren't from around here, I'm sorry we're better than y'all. <laughs> and we know it. <laughs> we don't know it, never, but it's a, it's a hidden secret. I always secret. say you never negotiate with the West Texans. <laughs> because it's, it's like you, they, you don't even know they're getting you until they got you. That's right. It's, well, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing. So. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. My, so yeah, my, you know, my, my grandfather, Stanton, and... Uh, and all those guys, my my came out to Heckville, and uh, just North Idaho here. Yes, my brother still has that farm, and uh, awesome. and that's where my grandmother was raised. And they went to school in Beckton. It burned mm -hmm. down, and the my grandmother and granddad Stanton ended up coming to Idaho to graduate in the thirties. And then my grand wow. my parents, uh, excuse me, uh, this land that we're on right now, my grandfather bought in the thirties and built these houses and we you know i think when you talk about family the legacy yes is uh it's something we've always talked about is because when you have something that i always say you, your name means something it does we just we just bought the feed store and uh through some neat things and we tagged it with our name because yeah, i tell my kids like, like if you're going to tag it with your name you, you got to own it and you got to live up to that Yes, and uh, and that's Set what my that's what my grandparents and this was the Johnson place. My mother grew up at Johnson here. Oh wow! And he they all grew up with the the Isons, the DeBus, the Fergusons, the Harmons, uh, all those all those farmers, all those people still around in this area. They if you're Madlo, you know all those names. No yeah, doubt. No yeah, doubt. and and Beckton's and yes, and you know we grew up with uh, their their kids grew up with my mom and dad and. And I grew up with their kids, and and you know some of those, some of those are growing up. My grandkids are growing up with their grandchildren and now great grandchildren. Mm. And Amazing. but, uh, yeah, my parents went to, met in Idaho, fifty eight sixty one. They graduated. They they wow. got married. I graduated here in eighty eight, and mm. um, met Stacy there after my brothers and my sister graduated. And uh, but we met um, my brothers getting married uh -huh. uh, to. Katrina, yes, which was Stacy's. Taught me, yeah, which yep. was Stacy's sister. Okay, yes, yes. So they came down to plan her wedding, and that's uh, that's when I met Stacy. So, for all you that can't find your mate, go to weddings. It's a good atmosphere. Yeah, love is in the air. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's when you get them. That's when you lock them in. Yeah. That's what I, I always joke. Yeah, I mean. I tell everybody that I brought uh, my wife to the Lord because I met her at church. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, at a wedding, at church, you know, people, like, that's kind of where girls go. She, You know, my wife says she got the MRS degree. You heard that, the missus? <laughs> no, yes. yes. <laughs> she's like, I went to college, uh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I wanted to meet somebody. That's I'm like, right. I'm glad, because she's from Denton. Yeah, okay. You know, okay. she's from North Texas. And so uh, coming out here, you know, I snatched her up too. Yeah, she opportunistically. Yeah, they told me Stacy was a sorority girl and was from living in Boulder, Colorado. And and did she go to school there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, she was she was going to Greeley. Uh, yes. And, yes. But she was in her parents were living in Boulder, and I was told she was some Colorado sorority girl. So I invited <laughs> her to a West Texas party, and. Uh, Drove tractor all day, went to go pick her up at her uncle's house, and and I'd never met her. 
uh, we were oh. with this wasn't a date. It was just to take her out because she was here. Yeah. And it's kind of sure a good time. Yeah, it's gonna be funny taking her out to a party out in the middle of the country and yeah. And I walked up and saw her through the screen door and I was like, dang, I should have taken a shower. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, uh, I love it. she was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew that You're minute. Like, man, I didn't show up. <laughs> I didn't show up. And we spent the whole week together and yeah. we, uh, uh, I'd never been with another girl or woman since. And oh, wow. Yeah. We got married a year later. So y'all, oh, wow. So y'all were pretty immediately serious. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Love at first sight almost. It, it was. Say? Absolutely. And and for her too. For her too. Even though you didn't shower. I didn't shower, and I was a catch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 155 pounds soaking wet. Oh with man, I love Farm it. boy, yeah. Gin hat. The, the farmer's tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smell like yeah. West Texas. Yeah. So you know, at that point, it was I was going to college, and uh, always the one. Here at Tech. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Ag economics was planned to be a lawyer. Uh, go down and do real estate law was the end goal. We are uh, Texas Tech Exceptionalists on this podcast as well. Absolutely. So you're in good company. Absolutely. We are better than y'all, <laughs> Texas everything. Tech alums. <laughs> everything. Everything I do is this. Stacey says, all right, take a picture, but no guns up. Yeah. She's like, there is a. Yeah. 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 yeah there's, she said, everything can't be red and black. But uh, like, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, she changed the feast sort of blue. I was like, oh my lord! But oh, that's at least dumb. it's close to cowboys. You know, that's classic. <laughs> that's true. But it, it, I, I like what y'all done with the with the remodel. We love we love the coolies and we love feeding things. But uh, y'all put your stamp on it, and it's a new era. Yeah. And and I I don't know. I just that's another thing. Cause so this this t podcast is titled entrepreneurship. So I might every now and then do a little bit of an aside. Yeah. So. On that, real quick. Hey guys, Jordan Robert Kirk here. I hope you're enjoying the uh, conversation with uh, Mr. Daniel Stanton on entrepreneurship. I just wanted to say, um, I, I like to keep the conversational style format, but I have gotten a little bit of feedback that, you know, it's a little all over the place. And so I'm working on that. Um, that being said, if you have any suggestions uh, and you're enjoying the podcast, maybe you have a, a suggestion that, uh, it might, something I might try. Uh, please feel free to let me know, and uh, let's get back to the podcast. How how important do you think the rebranding was? To what was it more of a uh, establishing like we're here? Um, was it just was it a, a messaging thing? Was it you know marketing? Was it just setting a new tone? How important do you think that rebranding was of a? I mean, y'all didn't change the business model. It's it's retail. It's feed. It's supplies. I assume. Yes. But you put your, your your mark on it. So if you don't mind, what? How how important was that to you? Um, and with you know, we we know the coolies and and they owned it and 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 with you know no uh, disrespect to them, but but it was yours. And and what, what what were you saying with? I mean, brand new paint job, new sign, um, just you know new new branding, yeah, yeah. new new uh, new name. You yeah, know, so the the. What's the thinking the, behind that? The, the thinking is, is that when you when you take on something, you just you're gonna you're gonna succeed. That's just the thinking. Like farmer, I think the farmer in me brings that out. Uh, growing up that way, mentality. There's no fail. You, yeah, it's all in. Well, <laughs> you, yeah. yeah, you gotta be. You gotta be. And so, uh, I don't ask. I don't. I'm not asking a lot of people's opinions. We're just gonna go do it. Yes. And so with the brand, that brand. It's kind of interesting. So yes. if you look at the S, uh, yes. it's the covered money S. And yes. that's the brand that my great-grandfather had, my grandfather had. It's been recorded in I, in Lubbock Love in it. the brand. I went out there and got it, re-registered it. And, Love it. And, and yes. I was like, okay, so if you're going to do that, if you're going to do this just like a farm, a ranch, or anything, uh, to me, you ride for the brand. And, Amen. And and Yellowstone has kind of made this cliche a little bit, but we were doing it for his school. And oh, I know. I was going to say that's that's to me. I hear that. I, I think a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> and my grandpa was a cowboy in the in the sense that I you know at that at this time. Although we all think of the uh, the uh, the uh, trail riding, uh, cattle driving cowboy when we think of that. But that that spirit still exists here. And and you wanted to take that, and you said we are continuing on. In everything, including here yeah. at this store. Yeah, and so my grandparents and my dad and everybody and my 
uh, my mom was remarried. They had we had you know divorced family, but they I was fortunate to grow up with two dads, and in uh, both of them, like your name means something. Yes. And so if you I put your it. name on it, then you own it and you mean something. So I've taught my kids that. That's you know my kids are working. Everyone's there, and hopefully through the years that that means something to the community. Yes. That when they come in there, it's gonna it's going to it's going to mean something. We're going to take care of you. It's and it and it gives everyone there the pride to do what's right when no one's looking, which is a big thing. And yes. Take care of people, and yes. and so that's that that retail mentality, that that expression of of who you are, uh, you know, riding proud, riding for the brand. Yes. Makes sense to me. Yes. And, and I love that. And so we we looked around and there's. So where do you go buy drugs? I say here in town, the uh, Driscoll, right? Right. Where Where did you used to go buy John Deere tractors? Hearst. I know. Where did you Where did you buy we love the irrigation Hearst. equipment growing up? Payne. Payne. Where Where do you go get your tires fixed? Bozeman. Yeah. And I, I thought, you know, uh, there's a pride there that goes all the way back to a lot of those, and then. We went to the Harmons hundred year celebration with their farm. Yes. The Harmons. You the know, Harmons, you, yes. You, I, and so I'm like, okay, we're gonna call it Stanton's. Yes, I love and because it. Because I, I want people uh, uh, to know that that you know that stands for quality and and excellence and you come get what you need and we're gonna take care of you. Yes. So that's I hope that answers that kind of thought process. No, I think that's good. Well and I mean, I love the, the sold out mentality. You know, we're all in. We are not going to fail, however. And so much so that we're going to put our name on this because, you know, I think I, I tell my kids all the time, you're Kirk kids, you know. And my oldest is seven and my youngest is one. And uh, But I think that's a little bit of something that I think our, our culture and our society has lost. Speaking of, of the uninteresting, boring story, um, you know, these sociologists and, you know, kind of these thinkers that identify cultural trends and where and when does this generation X, millennial, now Z, now my, my oldest is alpha, I guess, is what they call it. You know? Alpha. They, they started over. <laughs> Very original. <laughs> but, you know, how do, they, how do they define these trends? And, um, well, regardless of how they define them, it's still the families that continue to be the backbone of society, even though they've become splintered in our modern day. And there's not near as much of an emphasis on what family is and what family means. And it's not as much of a tight knit as a culture, the backbone of our country. Um, and I think it's, it's more prevalent in West Texas than it might be in a lot of parts of the country. And that's why we're exceptional. That's one of the reasons. But it's <laughs> why you still do deals with a handshake. Yes, why you can. Yeah, we have a catering business, and yes, uh, and we got a tractor driving by right now. That's yeah. You can tell where we're at with the sunset. Yeah, um, but beautiful. Uh, you know, with catering, we we do a million. One of the largest caterers, and we've done them all over the the country, and uh, I don't ha I do them without contracts handshakes and and uh I love it. and uh, i think that comes from the mentality around here you know it's yes uh but i i think back to like when i say my name we've been given a lot too yes and this community's given uh, my family a lot supported us uh every and i think it you know you, you get what you receive yes or what you give you know you and you receive what you give and we 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 got to serve, yes. And that's with our catering business, restaurant business, real estate business. Everything we do, it's about a servant mentality. Yes. And and I'm trying to, uh, so it's a blessing to be able to employ some people, uh, maybe yes. be a blessing to them for a while, and in the yes. respect, of maybe they'll be a blessing to this community, and in the meantime, maybe you know we can do some good things. Money allows you to do some good things. He does, and and, and, and it, I love that. I forget. I've, he probably remembers all the people who quote things, but I don't remember them. But I just so if Not I'm duplicating, always. it says, you know, it's just it's just like, um, and I lost my train of thought for a second. But when you when you give back, um, you know, to to be a blessing, 
And to be blessed, you got to be a blessing. Right. Yes. And yes. And I think, you know, when I'm helping team members, helping people do that, we have a chance to help our our community. Help. They're not always going to be with us, but maybe when they been around our business at some point, they're going to learn something that makes them a better person. Because there was all these those people in my life. Well, and it, it makes me think of, uh, so I, I have a band and I'll bid on gigs and things for private parties and events. And then, you know, people have me over and, and uh, I'll play at venues. And I've done one contract in, uh, down in Alpine, Texas. And I won't say that it was at the Old Crystal. Um, <laughs> and I won't say the owner's name because I forgot it. But... <laughs> But it was on New Year's, and I was a country band. And at the time, I was even doing more old country than I do now. And I do a lot of old country, but I, was, I wasn't even doing any Texas country. I was doing, like, Waylon, and, and that Waylon was new. You know, Waylon was young. I was doing Ray Price, <laughs> Willie. You know, I was doing old stuff because I loved it and because I was playing with Marty Gilbert, oh, who, who loves that old he's country. He's talented. Oh, he's the best. He's probably I one of the biggest Marty. influences musically and, and on my faith and, and in so many ways. But anyway, we were Is we were there playing. an instrument he can't play? There's not one. Yeah. Well, I think there's some that he hasn't tried. Those are the only <laughs> ones that we don't know for sure. But I would wager that he could. Good old Marty. <laughs> but yeah, we were down there. And this is the only contract I got. And about 30 minutes in, they said, you're playing too much country. And I said, I advertise as a country band. And I told you that's what I do. And they said, yeah, but you said you'll play some upbeat stuff. And I said, we just played Boot Scoot and Boogie, which there, there, there's a newer one. Okay, there's, there's a 90s song. But uh, they said, all right, you're done at, at, at midnight. And we were supposed to play 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, am I still getting paid the same? And they were like, no. And uh, we took a break, and I went and I talked to the owner. And she was, anyway, now, now I'm getting a little bit off. It was a terrible experience. We ended up getting paid. The owner was high and probably drunk and, and everything you can imagine she was. And she wasn't in her right mind. Her, her uh, bouncer was trying to manage for her and the bouncer was clearly over her head. You yeah. know, she was, and it was, a, it was a female bouncer and I think she, she wasn't even the main bouncer. It was supposed to be a dude and anyway, it was just a mess. You know, and that was one of the only places I got a contract. It's, it's hard to, it's, it's so, Sometimes we, you know, I'm thinking out loud, just sometimes it's hard to, to uh, remember all the good ones because we always remember the bad <laughs> one, don't we? That's true. And, and, and I think that's something that I, I try to focus on is like when things get rough, you got to look at your blessings. Look at the good things that have yes. happened because I, I lose contracts. I lose. It happens. I lose stuff. I mean, I, and, and you, get, you get angry, mad, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Uh, you got to remember those blessings, don't you? You do. And what, what I was going to say was the same people that that will leave their door unlocked or, or, you know, like are the same people that will do a a job, a gig, a catering event on a handshake. Yeah. And I think you got to be a little bit crazy. But you and, and, and what you said about you got to bless to be blessed. You know, I think you recognize that oftentimes you're blessing someone who has never been blessed and they might burn you. Yeah. But also, when they see that, they're like, this guy's crazy. Yeah. I want to be just like him. Yeah. They recognize the beauty in that. And, and that's, that's another, I mean, you didn't, I didn't know that. You didn't, you didn't tell me that, that, that you do things like that. But I think, I mean, that is, that, is what, that is what people think of when they think of America 30, 40 years ago. You know, the audacity of people to trust each other. Wow. Can't imagine wow. now. Actually, you can. It still goes yeah. on in some places, yeah. and we're one of those places. Because we, we tend to want to live in fear. Yes. And and everything's guided by fear and fear of loss, fear, and uh, and I think that is there's you got to start trying to figure out how to live in abundance. And, right. And, and well, and you have to be willing to lose. Yeah, the losing is a hard one. And, and I think you know it's because we call it thing. win or learn. Win or learn. There you go. I hate losing. Oh, I know. I mean, I'm as competitive. I, oh, I do too. Oh, but that's the hardest you thing learn. to learn. You gotta but learn. But if you can lose, then you can win tomorrow. That's yeah. actually so. This, you know, I title. I want to title this podcast entrepreneurship because, you know, when I was younger, 
when you first moved here, you were the uh, Fuddrucker guy to me. Yeah. Right? And I didn't know. And then, and then come back around and you're like, hey, uh, if you need any help uh, with selling anything, I, you know, I'm in real estate as well. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, I will. I was like, well, I know a lot of realtors. You know, this is, there's a lot around here, but, but okay, that's good to know, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I walk into feeding things one day. This is before y'all had rebranded. Y'all were just kind of open, soft open or whatever. And, uh, and there you are. And I'm like, are you shopping here too? <laughs> I'm like, how many things mm-hmm. do you got your hand in? Yeah. And uh, and that's that to me. I mean, well, one that's that's multitasking. That's able to compartmentalize your life, multiple businesses, you know. And then you're like, well, I do a lot of catering too. And I saw you at uh, Kelly Jack's, uh, Jack do, doing the catering there one time. Yeah. So I've seen you. I've seen you doing it hands on. I'm sure you got people and you and you do it yourself and and, and everything in the world. So. Um, yeah. If if you don't mind divulging this, what all what all are you involved in, and why 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 <laughs> why do you decide why are you putting yourself out there in so many different things and how yeah. how in the world, Daniel? Yeah, one. I'm not I'm not real good as an entrepreneur of maintaining. That's my weakness. Of maintaining. Yes. So you start well. I start and I can create. I can guide. I can lead. The maintenance is hard for me. So like longer term. Yeah. Okay. So how any, did you learn that the hard way? The hard way. <laughs> <laughs> well, COVID taught me a lot of that because during COVID, we we had 15 restaurants beforehand. Had a real estate business. Uh, I also had a, we have a disaster insurance business where we do flood adjusting as a family. Done that for many years and and all of a sudden you go t- from uh, not to nothing, zero, nothing's open, nothing's going on. And then, yes. and then you have, um, uh, you have to let, we had to let people go. Yes. And so all of a sudden you have to start doing everything again. Yes. And then I realized that, uh, you know, these businesses, the most, all of them are only good because of the people around me. Amen. And I've been blessed with having great people around me. Yes. And finding And they've people. been blessed by you. And, and so it's, uh, one of my guys, in the restaurant business he tells me stay in your lane and and i'm like okay you you know because if I, I start trying to get too much into the kitchen he's like get out of your stay in the lane oh, i see yeah get out of does he work for you yes okay yeah and i love that because it's like you got to know your strengths and weaknesses yeah hire for your weaknesses stay in your strengths and and you want somebody like that working for you absolutely who has that much confidence well i Not, think in the aircraft and also to tell you Hey, you're pushing, you're you're get, you're bumping up on me a little. Yeah, I, I mean that's that is so valuable. It's so valuable because most somebody. most a lot are not a lot. I say most a lot of leaders have followers around them, and they never know. It's the emperor's no clothes, or you know. I think the eleventh commandment is, "Thou shalt not fool thyself." Mm. And how many people fool themselves thinking, and and then they lead out of fear, and 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 and, and they can't. You know, they're always they they run their businesses like a prison instead of an army, and yeah. and an army you fighting together. You got you right. may have a leader, but right. but you're, you're it's only as a group you can win, and as yes. a prison everyone's out of fear and 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 protecting, protecting. Their, their little two cigarettes and their and, socks and their and how sink. do you and and how do you how do you get an organization? That I that's we were looking at my books earlier. How do you study how to create an organization where people, uh, you know, want to, where they can live in their strengths, and then the the whole company will 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 prosper. If you if you find they're not in their strengths and they're in the wrong the wrong spot, then everybody's miserable. Yeah, it's like it's like a boat uh, rowing and that. That that boat uh, they're paddling against, against each, each other. other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so buddy. and uh, so I'm I'm a I think that time management. I you know not everyone wants to work like I do, and I, I that was a hard one for me to learn early on. Is that uh, I expected everyone to sleep four or five hours a day, wake up, jump up, get ready to go, and go till. 10, 11 again do at night again. and do it over and over and over again and love it. And, uh, you know, some of my guys, they, I blew out a lot of people because they, 
they, they didn't, that wasn't the lifestyle they wanted. And so now I accept that, yeah. you know? I, I don't look Play at them. To their as, strengths. I don't look at them as lazy. And their abilities. Yeah, I used to think they're lazy. You, gotta, you can sleep when you're dead type statement. Why like, can't you do what I do? do? Yeah. Or why don't you want to do it? Why don't you want to? And I learned that um, that's that you got to accept people where they are. So try to see people the way God sees them. Yeah. Right. I agree. And I, I learned uh, one of the best, biggest things I ever learned was personality profiles, the DISC profile, D-I-S-C. Tell me about that. Yeah, you've got you got four quadrants. You've got outgoing people and reserved people, and you've got task people and then what we call people people. Yes. And so, um, and everybody kind of fits in these quadrants. Like my wife is a reserved people person. So she, she sees people, she's kind of in the background. I'm a task outgoing person. I walk in a room, everyone kind of knows it. That's who mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got, you got reserved task people. That's like an accountant. You know, they love to be by themselves, numbers. They want to be right. Then you've got people that may be like a musician that might be outgoing and people oriented. They love people, love to be on stage, love that, and they're outgoing and they're the fun of the party. Yeah. And not any of them are negative. God made every one of them. If you look at it and you look at the apostles, you can pick each one out. There was a physician. There was Paul, which was the apostle. That was the the outgoing D, high D. You know, Mm. there's... I need to look into that. Yeah. Disc. Disc. I can teach it to you. Okay. Uh, It's a... And and so, you know, part of when I'm hiring people, I call it H3SC. H3SC. Humble, hungry, honest, smart, and curious. So humble means... You think of others before yourself. This is what we look for in employees. Humble, think of others before you. Uh, hungry, you don't ask, am I done? You ask, what is it left to do? You show up early, you leave late. You don't leave something undone. You're hungry. You mm. want to You want to succeed. Humble, hungry, uh, honest, honest. That's my mother's, and I, you know, everyone has told lies. Every time you tell a lie, you got to remember it. And then every time you're around that person, you got to still remember the lie. And it's it gets so cumbersome. To keep up. And she's like, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you say. That's true. And I was like, wow. So if I, I tell I, people, if I repeat myself, I'm sorry. I try. I, I, hopefully I don't have to remember what I said. Yes. Yes. Uh, smart. Smart isn't school smart. Smart is leaving the room better than when you got there. Mm. Think about that. Because most of us put on pedestal A's. Our, our doctors, our titles behind Pedestal names. A? Like an A student. Oh, yes. Yes, and that perpetuates itself, which yeah. that's their gifting. But it doesn't doesn't mean someone who doesn't make grades is not just as smart. Right, no. And, and, there are and different it, types of intelligence. A hundred thousand percent. And, yeah. I, and, and God's given a gift to everybody. It's your job to find it. Amen. And then the last one's curious. And I love this one. This one's one of my greatest strengths. I can already tell that's one of my favorites, too. It's curious. So... Like learning profile. That's why I'm here with you. I'm learning, learning <laughs> I profile. Learn from yeah. You. yeah, learning all these things and uh, being a constant learner, constant. I just, it, I can't get enough of that because I just want to be better. So when you have these businesses, it's like you see gaps. Um, we have a disaster insurance of business, and I, I'm a flood adjuster, mm-hmm. and I get to go to these hurricanes. I, I get to go to these hurricanes, and I can I can spend 30 to 60 days with people who've lost everything, had flood water up. And you get to be a blessing for them. Now it's financially good too. But, but sure. what a what a I look at it as a ministry. It's so it, awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. Real estate. You, it's such a neat opportunity. One of the biggest <laughs> things anyone ever does is buy a home. Our yeah. in most of my business is commercial, and some of these guys have their whole life in their business, and you think they got it all together, but they've never bought land or built a building or they've always. It's like they do it once and been in there for 30 years. Mm. Like how do you, you get the chance to help them like create something. From maybe. from your position as a real estate yeah. agent. Okay, and my, so, my business background and my, everything else. Well, like, and isn't so, that awesome? Okay, you've you, touched on so many things. So let's, uh, yeah, so there was a lot right no, there. No, the reason why I did, you went through yeah. all these things and to me they're all interrelated. They are, no. Yeah. But just for the people out there, I, I, I want to I get this. Tell me what I, I know you're involved. So, okay. I said, you're the Fuddruckers guy to me. When, when y'all first moved yeah. here. Yeah. At that point already, 
And, and first of all, where did y'all move from? We were living in uh, Phoenix at that time. Really? Yeah. So we, so that, that's a. Were we, you doing similar things out there, restaurants yeah. and, or completely different? <laughs> You're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This gets all, this could be a long one. Uh, how that's long okay. You got? Oh, we got time. <laughs> oh, we, well, <laughs> we, however you, much you want to get no, into. No, we, when we got married, um, I was going to go to A&M get my master's and. And get Ag Econ, uh, Ag Eco, Eco. Like, yeah, I got, got my Ag Eco from Tech. Yes. a minor in real estate. Took all the law classes. Okay. I okay. was going to go get my uh, Lear program. They have a, a Texas A and M called Land and Economics Real Estate. So you go either you get Lear. your master's okay. in economics, and then you get a real estate uh, equivalent to what they call an MAI, which is an appraiser. And then I was going to come back to Tech and do a law degree. And uh, oh, so, wow. so that was my plan. And then, but I got married, had a kid, and was broker, then broke. And, yep. and, uh, <laughs> so, and that's <laughs> 20, 22, 23 broke and, yes. and, um, Hurricane Andrew hit Florida in 1992 and Stacy's father, grandfather, I'd been doing insurance adjusting with them, climbing roofs and doing things like that. And mm -hmm. uh, on the part-time weekend, make money. so insurance. we went, yeah. he told me, come down here, make some money. You can go back to college and, and, uh, and he said, you make about this much money. I'm like, okay. And he lied to me. I made like three times what he said. And, and we were lived, wow. we were in Miami, Florida and crazy. So made, he lied to you in a good way. I mean, it was you a good way. Money, money, big money. Wow. And that's great. We, and I blew it all down in Miami, Florida, being young, dumb and ignorant and stupid. And, there's and a, there's and, a lot of shiny things that yeah, caught your Bahamas, eye. Yeah. Bahamas, the keys, the oh, vacation. vacations, all this stuff. Oh, yeah. But, but we, we, um, we lived in Miami for six years. Uh, okay. Came back. I did not know that. Came back and moved to Dallas for some stuff, and we couldn't wait to get back to Texas. And then we could call me back to my, Florida for about ninety days, and then came back to Dallas, and then we uh, moved to Oklahoma City for because Stacy was from Oklahoma. From Oklahoma, uh, yes. But there was insurance stuff there and other business stuff, and then we went from Oklahoma City to Austin for business and lived in Leander for a while okay. in the Austin area and had yep. some, started doing real estate development and some other businesses there. So at this and, point were you mostly uh, doing the disaster insurance and then you started in real estate or were you saying, when you say businesses, are you saying startups? Uh, yeah, startups, developments, real estate developments, and partners, we put some groups together and would buy some things. Some were successful, some weren't. Uh, in the Spicewood area. So you have been an entrepreneur pretty much since day one. Yeah, we. I mean, my even with my father-in-law, my father-in-law father tried to create a uh, uh, something called the Tournament Golf Association at one time. <laughs> what does that say? That again? Tournament Golf Association PGA. Golf. Yeah, it was going to be the next PGA. Oh, like that was he wanted to start that. We did. Y'all did. Yeah. Did you ever hear of it? You no, know, it I'm not a big miserably. golf person. <laughs> ah, so probably not then. <laughs> Did anybody hear of it? Yeah, we outside were. of our circle. <laughs> no. It was funny. We were putting on golf tournaments that is on the weekend. Isn't that funny? That is the audacity. <laughs> yeah, you're bringing to back go good for memories. Something like that. Yeah, that is neat though. Stuff, stuff. Then we. Went, that is the sign of a true entrepreneur right there. Yeah, we went. We had uh, at that point we had three children, and this was. Um, well, this is coming up. This is Phoenix. The, well, no, we were in yet. Austin. And, yeah, and this this was a pivotal point in our life. Um, in year 2000, we had a uh, three-year-old daughter who passed away. Uh, she Man, was overnight, know. just died of suddenly, just went to sleep and didn't wake up. SIDS is what they call that. Or well, was it, it, was a, it was a, a bacteria infection in her blood. And so, oh my gosh. sepsis. And so it, it's uh, tough. And, and it, it, we, had, we had Justin and Blaine at that point. And, uh, wow. and so... So that that at that point you realize you're not you start you're not invincible. We're mortal. Yeah. Life and, is precious. Precious. And mm. so so that start that starts a whole transition into from also from that's the what I call a doubting stage. Like does God exist? Yes. Yeah, what the The hard uh, questions come up. Yeah, and it, and that that's that was that plagued me for for 15 years. I did not know yeah, that. so you start researching a Everything. curious stage again. Yeah, every you read every book, every curious on the things that should be settled. Every C.S. Lewis, every 
every atheist, everybody, like why, yeah. why? Who You're looking would, for answers. Yeah, isn't that crazy? No, and, it's but, not. But it's, so then we went, we, we left Austin after that and went to Albuquerque for, and uh, we were, uh, we were started building Johnny Carino's restaurants. Really? Yeah, on 1999. The, on just the real estate, on the contractor, on the Everything. investor side, or we were, were raising you the money. Owner? We were part of owners raising part money. Owner. We were. I was doing mostly the real estate, the cons, uh, with overseeing the construction part of the operations. Uh, learned, started learning restaurant operations. We built 16 restaurants in five years. Johnny Carino's. Yeah, from Texas to Arizona. Wow. Yeah, so that's where we got our feet <laughs> wet into 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 restaurants. And, I, I uh, want to say I had no clue what I was getting into when I said, hey, how about entrepreneurship? <laughs> I mean, that is, this is 101 right here, folks. Yeah. All, it's, so you mentioned this, and I, I've, you know, I've seen you coming and going in different, uh, different businesses, different locations. So I I'd kind of told you this, like, you know, some of your biggest successes are often mirrored by your, your biggest failures. Uh -huh. And especially for entrepreneurs, because like you said, you crash so hard, you you learn the hard way that you're not a maintainer. You're a, you're an idea guy. You're you're a startup. You're a leader. And then once you're in, when it's everything's going, you're not that guy. And so, what are what are some maybe some a couple of specific examples, and maybe that you took, and now today you're implementing those. No, Those ca cr catastrophic crash and burns. <laughs> crash and burns. Well, it's 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 not f not for everyone because, and thank God I've got a great spouse, and her dad. Raised, I think that's the number one biggest. Her thing. dad raised her too to to understand risk, and so um, I got we, one of those too. When we were moving from Florida to Miami, uh, from Miami to to uh, Dallas, yes. we had zero money. I mean, we were. Nothing. Had two kids, and to this day, I can't eat goober peanut butter and jelly. Because uh, you were eating it. A that's lot. all we had driving all the way. Just cheap. In a U-Haul truck and saving money. We weren't saving money. We didn't have any money. This was scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> scraping the bottom of the. You're goober looking under the seat. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get out the last and, tiny and, bite. And then, I, I think there's calculated faith because there's people who love to blame. Mm. God on everything, yeah. and they love to give him, say credit, and I just trusted God, and I and I say, you know, uh, you can't pick and choose that, but mm -hmm. I can I can look back at times now Wisdom. and know when His hand was around us, yes, and I didn't even know it. I wasn't giving Him glory. I wasn't giving Him credit. I wasn't doing anything. Yes, but I can see us coming and and mm. and and checks show up and money shows up the day before rent and you don't know how and so we've learned to live like that and and that is faith one two three shout on brown we're gaining ground glory hallelujah the dead's alive and the lost is found glory hallelujah Hey guys, this is Jordan Robert Kirk with the JRK Podcast and the Kirk Kids, uh, the four of them we have for now. Uh, Y'all, make sure and go download, download Antioch 277, that song we were just singing, and uh, hopefully we will uh, see you soon. Y'all want to tell them anything? Um, say, go get it. Go, go get, get it. it. Yeah, go get it, boy. Pearl, can you say, go get it? Billy, can you say go get it? I said it. Say it again. Go get it. All right, y'all heard him. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. By definition, right there. Yeah, and that's where the daughter, you know, losing the daughter in 2000, we moved to Albuquerque and started business, started the Johnny Carino stuff. And what was her name, if you don't mind me? Shaylee Marie. Shailene. Yeah, she she was uh, be twenty four years May sixth. Yeah, I cannot yeah. imagine. Yeah, she would be. Uh, yeah, so it's a beautiful girl. But yeah, you know, so we were in Albuquerque. This was about six months later, and this was when I finally found a little peace. I was sitting in Pier One parking lot. Peace, at, like inner peace. Yeah. Yes, and it stuck with me to this day. Was 
we were in Pier 1 parking lot in uptown Albuquerque, and I was mad, talking not real nice at that minute yeah. to God at all. Yeah, uh, and sure. <laughs> Well, that's, and, they and, call that the imprecatory song. And I was like, why me, God? <laughs> Wasn't why. He's like, you freaking doom. And he's yeah. like, he's like um, Ooh, yeah. And I heard, and I don't, I don't, I haven't had many of these situations in my life at all, but sure. I, I just felt the presence of the Spirit in him. Wow. And it said, uh, would you, um, I hadn't told this story much. So, Man, I it, appreciate it. Said, it. Thank it you. It said, um, would uh, she's, She's here with me, and mm, do you really golly. want her back on earth? Man, and I'm like, I'm gonna cry. I'm like, wow, no, I don't want. No. Like, what? You take care of her, Lord. Well, like, yes. really, all the pain, all the suffering. She's fine. What, are you really we want her, her to go through here. that? Yes. And and so it came to my heart very clearly. That, how many years later uh, was that? That was six months. Oh gosh. And it came to my heart, and it said, uh, still fresh. It said. Uh, would you rather, if you could have another dollar daughter for three years, would you do it again? In a heartbeat, I'd do it again. Yeah. yeah. In a heartbeat. Because, I love that. Because it's better to have than not had it all. Amen. And my grandfather passed away, Stanton here in Idaho, a month after Shaley, and he was in his 80s. And he came to me like, okay, so some people's lives are lived through their death, or sure. you know, through their whole life, and then they die. And then right. some people realize what their part of God is through their death. Sure. And that's what my daughter's was. Yes. And we went on and had uh, Shana and Jackson. And I probably yes. would have never had Jackson if, if you know, after you probably wouldn't have five children. But, you know, we do. And, and now they're blessings and huge. And Yes. And, and so that's kind of, so we spent six years in Albuquerque and my, went to Arizona and, mm. And it gets to your question was uh, one of our business partners our baby, uh, had uh, took his life, and oh, Lord. and it killed our business, bankrupt our business. And I'd signed on a bunch of things on a lot of money, yeah. And all of a sudden, everything went from being kind of what I thought was okay, and to uh, less than okay in the, in lots of six figure negatives. And so we we came back. His funeral was here. And we came back, and Stacy said, uh, "I think I can move back to Idaho, because she never wanted to come back." Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, and we were at the Lubbock Cemetery when she said that, and so she stays here. I said, "Okay, you stay here, find us a place, and I'll go home and pack." You were at the Lubbock Cemetery, seeing. And and I went to back to Arizona, and she was here, and she was. We had no place to stay, and I was going to pack. So this is what we've learned through years of entrepreneurship and faith. Yeah, and that is pretty. And so she's driving around, pivotal. and uh, looking for a place. place. And she sees someone on Mimosa here in Adler, Mimosa, Mimosa Street, unpacking, leaving, and she pulls up to him and and says, uh, "Y'all moving?" And they're like, "Yeah, who owns it?" <laughs> And it's Jim Beckton. Wow. And I called Jim Beckton, and uh, Cheryl answered the phone, and I've known Jim all my life. And he said, uh, with Beckton Insurance, like, yeah. you know, you got awesome insurance, back, getting back to naming. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. he said, I said, hey, Cheryl goes, hey, wait, wait, Daniel. Oh, and I goes, Jim, yeah. And she yells, and he comes back in. I said, Jim, where's your house for rent? He goes, yeah, I was walking out the door with a rent sign. Wow. <laughs> is that not amazing? I love, I love that. Yeah. So I had works in mysterious ways. I had no money, so we asked him if we could paint the place and clean it up, and there was ticks all in it. Wow. It was it was nasty, nasty. And but he said sure. Yeah, he gave us the grace to let us do it. And, wow. Uh, and uh, we. Where were you going to get the money? What was your next thought coming from? You know, I had a friend. Was it still Al faith, or were you still oh, yeah. scheming? And no, I, I had a friend. He sent me money. He sent me envelope. Wow. Didn't even know I needed it. And I got an envelope full of money. And wow. and uh, we used Justin would mow lawn so we could afford milk at that point. And wow, that was and the the lowest of lows. We were selling everything. Well, it it doesn't feel low. It didn't feel that <laughs> way. 
Because <laughs> wow. I, I would. I love that. So I, I knew did, Ju- did, Just, did Justin feel, did he know he was stepping up right then to help? Or did no. y'all just like, hey, we no, he do just some he'd go do lines and put the money on the counter. And wow. so I would get a. I love that. There was a coffee what place. What a good boy. My, was, my son, I, I'm, I'm like, sorry, my son is seven. And, uh, you know, he, he sort of has that, a little bit of that mentality. I did not. Well, that just that Justin has like anyway I, I i love that man yeah and none what of my a... kids are weak but he thinks <laughs> he thinks they are because <laughs> he grew up like that oh yeah and i love it he just won his fourth championship for texas tech ranch horse team yes fourth in a row sorry Amazing. Bur- I know. son brag yes um, need to have him on here he's That'd like cool. yeah you would enjoy because he's yeah. like he's like why do you win we work hard Amen, brother. <laughs> and we have a lot of faith. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> so he, um, yeah. So that was fun times. And I would get up. And I had, I was, got, I had my real estate. I had my real estate license a long time. I reinactivated it. But when I would, y'all came back. But I went and I, I went and pulled the. I asked around and found like the hundredth, hundredth most wealthy, successful men in Lubbock. And I would go. I, I made it my mission so you could go to a coffee shop. Is where Payway is now over mm-hmm. there. I forget the Kings name. Of, Gate. Yeah, and and you could get a two dollar cup if you brought your own cup of coffee. And, That's cool. And I could I had a cell phone and a Franklin planner, and I had those lists of all those men, and I would just call them all day, and I'd ask them to come meet me at the coffee shop. I had no office, had nothing, just trying to to get. You were looking for investors. Or Any, the next plan. business partners. Yeah, a guy named Tim Minix met me. He was at Keller Williams, wow. and he hand, he hired me to do some consulting. Awesome. And that's that on puts, real estate uh-huh, or every, businesses. We, everything. Every, we put the we, RFP for the. He built the uh, animal uh, shelter there on the loop, and we put that RFP together. I helped put him oh, with yeah. that. Too. So he, I just did a lot of projects for him. So if you don't mind me stopping you here for a quick question. At this point, you've had a lot of success. You've made a lot of money doing insurance, doing restaurants, and then you have this tragedy, lose everything. What is your pitch to a guy, like what was his name? Jim, Tim Tim Minix. Tim Minix. What was your pitch to him and how, you know, this is probably one of the most instructive things. How are you selling yourself? What were uh, you what was your what was your pitch to him like, "Hey, I'm the guy that can do X." Or, yeah. you know, what was your posture? What was your, I mean, because you're a go-getter. You said, hey, meet me at the coffee shop. I'll bring my, I'll bring my cup. We got a $2 cup. And, and he's like, you know what? This guy, God, I'll be there tomorrow, you know? I mean, the audacity, the tenacity of Daniel Stanton here. I mean, that's well, that's so, something. You got some cojones there. So it, I don't look at it that way. You I don't like, think that because that's who you are. Because if you, if you look at it, like, let's think about it. If I wanted to... Uh, if, if you have a servant heart and you really want to help people, then what are the questions you ask them to, <laughs> for that they need? It's not what I can do for them. It's what do they need done. Yeah. So is there anything they, that's, that's you're struggling with? So you're saying What's this your was business? your pitch? Yeah. How's it working? Mm. Wow. You put yourself kind of in the, in the so, how so can they I help tell, you? They tell me what they need and then I... You're like, I will get I that will done do that. for you, sir. I can do that. That's before Google. <laughs> Man, the pre-Google days. 2006. I, so I think I so had you had theory. to read and learn. So I'm, I'm, I'm tracking. So Barnes & Noble was my friend. You could read books oh, there and, for and, free. And we've been talking about that. I, I was admiring his library earlier because I have books and books and books, and we, 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 both, we share that, that passion. But, uh, yeah, pre-Google. So I got an engineering degree, and I feel like – when I, when I found out how little, even the, the classes that graduated a few years before me were able, were able to use the internet, I was like, I don't know if my degree should count as much as theirs. Mm-hmm. And in the pre-Google days, I still have some friends like this, and I want to have a buddy of mine named Travis. I want to have him on too. He, I think, would probably be a guy like you where before Google, you had guys. You're like, okay, I got a guy who... Who does this? My dad. My dad's a little bit like this. He's like, I'm gonna find it, or I'm gonna find somebody that can find it. Um, and so you were the guy who's like, listen, there's no Google. I am your go-getter. If you need um, yellow, 
If Hankies have, made in Taiwan. I will fly to Taiwan and I will get those and I will what get I them. Do. <laughs> yeah, you will, you will figure Doesn't out a way to get fun? it done. Yeah. Absolutely. RFP for. And see, maybe that was part of your <laughs> RFP. Yeah. What's an RFP? You have to look at it. Oh, request for a proposal. Okay. So how do you write that for a city? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it worked. We won. Yeah. <laughs> what a blessing. Well, and so that was your that was your leg up. So so you did this animal shelter with Tim. Yeah. And that and then real estate too. Oh, six. this was moving to Idaho yeah. with no. negative bank negative. account. Uh, painting for your rent. Yeah. Your son mowing lawns. Didn't really know how much he was helping, but he was helping. He was helping. That was so helpful. Yeah. Praise God for Justin. <laughs> that is so. I love that. I hope. I hope that I can instill those same values in my boy. Yeah. I mean they, that is amazing. There, no one watches or hears. No one hears what you say. Do you know that? All they do is watch what you do. That and means so much more. And that's people it, that it, don't it. understand that are in a frenzy. Yeah. Because they hear rhetoric, they hear the news, they hear the politics, they hear, you know, the the smut and the and the trash, and they get worked up. And yeah, if you sit back and you distill it down to what's actually happening, the world is a lot simpler yeah. place. <laughs> and it's you, a lot easier to you decipher. Watch, you watch people what they're saying, or you see what they're hear what they're saying, but then you watch what they're doing and it makes no sense. Yes. Yeah. He's right. like, I want to, like, t- That's a we're hiring. Quick. We're hiring. We're like. I'm not going to do a, a handshake with that guy. <laughs> we're hiring. Yeah. yeah. They come in and they're like, I'm like, they're like, you want to work? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to work Saturday. <laughs> Their body I can't work this. I, but I need money. I'm like, well, it doesn't matter. You're, you know. Like, you, I hear what you're saying. But, but you, <laughs> there's no action to this. Yeah. Yeah. They, they do not compute. They so, don't line up. Yeah, so, you know, what you do, and these are these statements in my head, like, what you do, speak so loudly, I can't hear you. I wish I could remember who says that, but all these quotes come in my head. No, yeah, speak so loudly, I can't. What you do, speak so loudly, I can't hear you. Right. And I talk about kids, like, just let your actions speak louder than words. And and I think that's that's reality. And And that is always good advice. So these are quests. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not perfect, and I don't live these every day. Yeah. But 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 every morning, I, most people have seen me on my porch out there. Mm. And as I shouldn't Your say porch, every morning. Your porch, yeah. But I watch the sun come up. Mm. Because it, you watch that sun come up, it cleanses the world. Mm. And that's God saying, okay, yesterday doesn't matter. Yeah. you got a whole new day to do everything over again. Mm. And this may be, this is... So this is a Stoics. I love the Stoics. Yeah, and please. So, so this is, you, you. It's it's, you only have this may be your last day, and 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 momentum mori means remember you're going to die. Mm. This may be my last day. This may be my last night here. Did you? This may be your last minute. Right. So what are you going to make of that? Mm. And what are you wasting it doing? And so that'll preach. And. Uh, I, I don't know. I've got a list in my book of someday maybe that's got 50 items on it, 100 items on it. I got a lot of stuff I want to do. Are these goals? Are they? Yeah. Their bucket list or? Yeah. All of the above. Everything. Yeah. I, I call them someday maybe. I hate bucket lists. I don't really I mean, like bucket lists. So that's, someday that's maybe the list. Vernacular. But, I, I mean, I signed up. Maybe, yeah. I'm putting. It, I signed up for a Spartan race in June. Good for you. 53. I'm going to go do a Spartan race. i got to figure out how to climb a damn rope. Yeah, I can't figure out <laughs> how to climb a rope. But, but. Yeah. But. Uh, Dang, yeah, that is hard. That is not an easy thing to do. But I, I'm not I'm not doing it for anybody. I'm not doing it for you. Uh, who am I doing it for? Me. It motivates me. Yeah, that's good. And, when, and if you can get to that point in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Because most guys are. You want to be in the 0.001 percent, because the 99.999 percent of people just criticize, condemn, and complain, and all they do is talk about bad about other people and, and and think they don't have a fair shot in life, and it wasn't their fault, and they're victims and not victors, and it drives me insane. People like that yeah. don't stay around me very long because I'm like a light. And what happens when you turn light on in your kitchen? The cockroach is scary. scary. <laughs> and have have you ever seen darkness overtake light? Mm-mm. No, darkness doesn't come in and take 
light goes away or it, com it comes and it cleanses the world. So in the morning, mm. I'm watching the sun come up and cleanse the world. The light is there. I got one more day to go do what, what I'm supposed to do Amen. or whatever it is. And Amen. And maybe someone will call me the day before on a podcast and you say, do you have time? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> and you think, and you think, okay, you weigh that against everything. You say, yeah, yeah uh, I think, I think, I think I will, you know, mm. who knows? It, maybe we'll reach somebody. Maybe it's that one, one person, maybe it'll make a difference. Yes. And that's, that's the other thing. Like I call it mad A&E and one percent. You like your acronyms. What would that? You can remember that, like you. No, they're they're. You can I, I, remember music. You. I can't remember lyrics, but I can remember acronyms. No, I, I love so, it. So I mad, it. make a difference. Make a difference. So so you want to live a freaking mad life, right? Yeah. Mad. Yeah. Okay. I love it. A and E, attitude and effort. That's the only thing you got in control of. Everyone gives it away. No one takes mm. attitude and effort. They don't own it. They mm -hmm. always say, like, I'm my own guy. And then they're mad at someone cutting them off or doing something bad to them. Like, well, it's your choice. Yeah. Between, between the instance and the response, you have the infinite control of what you do. That's that Viktor Frankl thing. Mm. And it said, you know, you have the, that. But say that one more time. Between the, between the actual incident and mm -hmm. the response, that pause in the, is your infinite control. That's what con that is what people give away. And that's where, like Seneca said, they that someone says, "Yeah, so yeah, yeah. hit you if I punch you in the nose," and you know that guy, and he's like, "What punch?" He didn't mm. respond. It was irrelevant in his world. Mm. Like, how can you not respond? How can you have a logical, thought-out response and pause before you react? Mm. And that changed my life. That's what that statement from Viktor Frankl's on my desk at my office in Lubbock. And I look at it every day, like if I get angry, anything, it's like between stimulus and response, I have a choice. And people give that away through their attitude and effort all the time. Oh, they don't work as hard as me. They don't do this. They, they, uh, like, oh, shut up. Get mm -hmm. out of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And then 1% better every day. Mm. You got to get just 1% every day. And then, you know, my company, I call it be a wow, a wow person. Because there's two types of wows, aren't there? Okay. Tell me, what are they? Wow. Uh-huh. Or wow. Yeah. Right? Yes. And I want to be a wow person. Excitement which, or disgust. <laughs> which means is a short another acronym, you love it, walk on water. Yeah. Yeah. And and who walked on water? The Lord Jesus. Jesus. And if you have him, if you're in him, then what are you? If he's mm -hmm. in you, Amen. what are you? Amen. And and I want to say too, you know, you've been preaching this whole time and I have too, and I, I just love it. And you say, you know, I do it for me. Um, and I, I, you know, some people would say, no, you do it for God. And like, well, of course. But I think uh, I, I did a study on Ecclesiastes a while mm -hmm. back. And, um, you know, but somewhere in there it says, uh, ba basically it says, you know, I, everything is meaningless. You know, it, it, that's that chapter, right? You remember, you sort of remember that. And it, and it talks about like, you know, I, I know the work I have, the labor, the labor that you have. And you, you do these things unto the Lord. And so to me, if you're doing it for you, you're re actually, you're reflecting your creator because he created you to do that. And so when you, you know, I, I was just going to clarify that, you know, when you say I do it for me, it's like, well, you, you're doing what God made you to do. And you are ultimately a reflection. The reason why you are light is because you're reflecting your creator. And I, and I, and I hope that has been evident this whole time. And as, as the sun is going down, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to end with, um, you know, I, I had a lot of things we didn't get to, so maybe I will definitely have to have you back on. <laughs> um, we'll we'll let them vote on that. They're like, Dad, gum, this will be, yeah, don't get him on again. <laughs> yes. Well, and 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 honestly, so on my last episode I, with with, uh, with my buddy Garrett Irwin, I, yeah. I think you know them. Um, I, you know, I said I would like to end with with a personal a personal challenge because we were talking a little bit about lofty ideas. And and we and you and I have been as well. You know, these are these are philosophical points, they're principles, and yet almost every one of them for you. And I think this is a, this is evident in your status as a I call you a visionary, um, as well as a doer. You know, be ye not merely hearers of the word, doers. You are you are both of those things. And so I feel like this whole podcast has honestly been a mix of story and very personal 
um, charges and applications and and I love the acronyms. I'm I'm big on memorizing and me and my kids we will memorize a different verse or a different thing yeah. every night because man that's another lost art is memorizing you know and yeah. sometimes we just need those uh, mnemonic devices those acronyms those different things to do those things. Um, but I wanted I, I wanted to end with two questions. One is is still I'm still tracking with you because you're like. Well, I've done so many things. Where do you want me to go with this? Uh, and we haven't even gotten to all your businesses. Um, but there, there's crazy. two things that I've personally been dealing with. Um, one is when I was offshore, a guy told me, you want to be the guy that owns his own tractor and mows every ditch in the county. And I said, well, no, no I don't really want to mow ditches. But I am that. I was an engineer who got stuck out there on the platform. And all of a sudden, I had a wrench and a checklist. And I was no longer an engineer. It was a holding place. And, and I just, and I did it so much. I was, by, I was behind the mechanic. I was like, here, let me get that. You know, and that wasn't my job, but I wanted to be that guy. And he said, I can see that in you. And he said, but you need to have 30 tractors and mow every ditch in the state, in the county, in the region. And he said, he said, hmm. when you realize that, that is when you're going to be successful. And I wanted to ask you, did you always have that? I, I, I see that you recognize that principle, that principle whether you can necessarily identify that personally if there was a moment but when did you realize in general that you weren't going to be the hands-on guy you talked about it get out of the kitchen stay in your lane you know you so you you, you you've butted up against that because you want to be that guy too when did yeah. you realize that you needed to be a leader of men and, right. and women and, and whoever you hire and not necessarily the guy flipping the burgers the guy uh you know, digging the post holes and, you know, when, when did you realize that? And, 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 and how much has that had an impact on your many, That's many endeavors and ventures? Yeah. That's a good question. Cause I, I don't know that I had like a revelation where you, you, you're on the road to Damascus or something, you know? <laughs> Well, and, and see, and that's, that's the thing I said, you had such audacity. You were like, I'm going to be the guy that does this. And you were like, Actually, no, I was like, how can I help you? Yeah, that's So right. I could see that in you, yeah. that, so, that you so, are the guy who's just going to so fill in the Even gap. today, yes, I'm studying a guy named Jamie Winfield, and he's talking about identity. Mm. And I'm listening to you, and it's talking to me, and I get distracted because I'm so curious. Yes, it's because it's thinking. Because yes. for so many people in, in Lubbock, they'll be like, um, who's, uh, who are you? And everyone will say, oh, the FUD guy. And all of a sudden they know me, and that's the identity I took on. Right. And so. Which is funny because I thought that too, and now I'm like, God, there's so no, much more no, than that. Isn't that real? And so, yeah. so you take on an identity as an engineer. Or sure. you, and you go, okay, now people also take identities on as a Baptist or a Methodist or a Catholic or a Mormon. Or, or I'm from Idaho. Or I'm Idaho. Yeah. Or I'm the Stanton. And, uh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I think, I think. I think right now is like my quest today is what is my true identity? Amen. And it's and, mm. and I don't think it's restaurant here or entrepreneur or real estate. It's just uh, you know I hope every day I live a life that people will eventually ask or if they need help and it happens all the time or I'm, I ask God to put me in the position that He can use me. Yes. And hopefully my identity will be. Uh, whatever it needs to be at that point in time. Mm. And so when opportunities are put in front of you, I showed you a book by Derek Stivers. It's like, <laughs> it's either, <laughs> it, was a, it was a- Hell no, a, or, or, or hell, hell yeah, yeah or, or no. no. That's right. And, and I've tried to live that because what the events, when it's not that, and it becomes your flesh, and you start doing it for your identity, yeah. then everything gets out of whack. Right. And all of us know people like that. Sure. Everybody knows someone that's out of whack, yeah. that they're very wealthy. What they take their life, or they're very wealthy yes. and their their family falls apart. Some they're of very, some of the most famous celebrities, people in our communities, and oh yeah, everything falls apart. And yes. and you're like, well, they got their identity from something other than than mm. than where where it should be coming from. Amen. And and that's where that statement with Christianity and everything. That's yes. why you don't see me preach. Sure. That's why you don't see me. That, well, that's preach. not your calling either. <laughs> well, it might be. It, it is my calling, but it, I do it through Other means. my life. Amen. Not not a pulpit. Not That's right. Uh, and I don't. It's beautiful. I think, 
if it wasn't for some of those people uh, that do give their life as a p pastor or a preacher, I wouldn't be here today because they gave me that that honey. Yes. And eventually the bread, and then you move on to meat. Yeah, that's and there's right. and there's seasons of your life that most people can't accept. And when you talk about young people, no one's willing to go through those seasons anymore. To me, mm. everybody wants instant stuff, instant gratification, instant this and that. Mm. When I'm telling, they're asking me, I'm dealing with that at the feed store. They're like, when is this going to turn around? When is this? Gonna? I go, we got a five year marathon here. So if you talk to most <laughs> of my people up there, most all of them will say, we're in a marathon. Amen. Because I got to preach that over and over because yes. they're just worried about today in a sprint. And, and, and how long can you, you can't run very long in a sprint, but people can run for years in a marathon. And so everything mm. in my life is a marathon. I, I love the, the story of the guy that's 90 years old that has a 10 year plan or 20 mm. year plan. Yes. <laughs> So. Well, and I, I don't want to, this is such a great way to, to cap it off, but I, I, and I don't want to interject too much, but I will say in, um, you're, you're preaching, it's a marathon, and, and, and your people follow you. And, and I think you were talking about words and action. Your resolve and your resolution to, to live out that marathon, that identity of, of uh, I don't know our our work, you know that's that's I, I actually did a I forgot I did do a podcast episode last season on on Ecclesiastes and our work, and uh, and our our identity is in the Lord and and in, and and it's manifested in what we do and and really you know we we think it's uninteresting <laughs> or we think it's it's simple and and it's actually you know for some for maybe some of your employees it could be that you're even somewhat of a father figure because they see your resolve and they and they see that they see that marathon mentality. And they don't only hear it, but they see it. And, um, and, and like I said, your, your greatest uh, success mirrors, mirrors your greatest failure. And as you told us, you've had some pretty catastrophic failures. You've had some life tragedies that, uh, man, I just, so, it makes me, you know. You know what's hard is, <sighs> and you'll find a lot of people that are successful and entrepreneurs, because I've interviewed a lot sure. of people, we can't remember our failures. Right. So you Well we learn from them. We learn, but Winter we move learn. we mass pa we move past them so fast. Yes. That we, we don't dwell in them. And that's a successful entrepreneur. So, so most people are a lot of people can never get over that and never start a new thing, never do something different because they can't move past. And and you're talking like I don't wanna talk about any of those because I I, I want to move on. I mean, there. I learned. I go. I want to. I don't, move. I don't mean I don't to. Want, no, but I don't you, mean to dredge it. No, but you follow what? I hopefully you I understand. Agree. Like I, no, I, 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 I yes. I've erased them from a lot of my memory, because I, I, I just, I just, it, it, they're not in my life, and and so. But uh, I, I had a neat statement. This, this. I was talking to a guy this week. I hired him. Actually, I didn't want to, but I'm, I'm like, it's just on my spirit, and I'm like. Like once we hire you, you're like family, mm. and I'm, I, you great. know, and it's you're you're gonna wear my brand, and and that means you're gonna belong, and I expect you to live a certain way and act a certain way, whether you're here or not. Yes. And he said, I never had a family before. Wow. I was like, oh my gosh, I, 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 was, just, I was trying to motivate you in my mind, but. It really meant something to yeah. the world to him. God used you. You had no clue. You were just trying. So, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm that's getting That's what at. I want to live like every day. Well, and, what's, and, and another thing you're talking about, and we could probably go over two or three hours. but well, we probably need to wrap it up. But, you know, I, I say this a lot, and I think you would probably totally agree with this. You know, confidence comes from basically having a short memory. We don't dwell on our failures. We learn from them, and we move on. And I and I just I just want to you know compliment you and thank you as well you know when I when I saw you in your in, in your in your store the other day and, and we mentioned about doing this you told me hey if you need help you know with this I got you if you need help with this because I was telling you about all the things I was going through let me know and I and I and I and I believe you because not only you know do you have that resolve with your employees at work but I think that's just something about you that uh, you keep coming back. You know, you're you're here, you're there, and I'm just like, man, what is it? This guy's all over the place, and and you are resolute, 
and 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 you have that you have that that quiet strength and that we're we're, we're going we I are i think i don't care what a lot of people think <laughs> me neither <laughs> and we have that in common if as your, well if your heart is you don't take it to heart i and the, and so when you like their opinion of me i'm 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 immune to and and so when when you get that you can act in god's what he's got planned for you because because you're not living to please men yes you're not living to to live up to someone else's expectations and and i'm not having to have these things to impress you right uh i i, I you know i was awkward taking you in my office no but i thought it no, i don't know why all. but you just not like this is my this is for me and, i love it and no. i think when you can get to that point in your business and your life and then you have that servant heart like golly put someone in front of me today and the 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 most disappointing thing would be that i didn't recognize that that's what i was supposed to do mm. because i was so caught up in my world of my selfishness or my anger sure. or my and you can't if you got all that you can't see what god's got planned or what he puts in front of you Damn. Just like I've been on airplanes a lot, and I'm on an airplane. And, okay, in Southwest, you want no one to sit in the middle seat, right? Right. And and I put headphones on, and I get the throw-up bag and put my Bible out because no one's going to sit next to me. <laughs> and and someone does. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then you find out they've lost a child. And they needed to sit by you. And I never see them again never hear from them again but we have a conversation and then i'm kicking myself walking off the plane going i almost missed that missed the blessing for me yeah because i was so dang selfish and the lord used you to bless them and that's a life worth living to me that's that's our we have that uh in our businesses it's uh have a, a life worth living and make a difference that's that's our mission a life worth living and make a difference and make a difference yeah and our our purpose is to wow the guest or customer today so they'll come back tomorrow with friends and that's good and but the have a life worth living and make a difference I and think, that's different to anyone it, everyone yeah. isn't it i think that's a uh that's a perfect spot to end on yeah daniel thank you and yeah, guys enjoyed it. yeah uh it got dark it did <laughs> oh. guys go by uh stand supply <laughs> Eat and, a burger. Uh, and, and go get a burger and call yeah. about catering. And, and if you need a real estate agent or disaster <laughs> uh, insurance, insurance adjuster. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope you don't need that. <laughs> yeah. But guys, go and, and share uh, and tell all your friends about this. Uh, let me know if you have anybody who would like to come on. And uh, Daniel, we will definitely have you back. All right. Thanks. Yep. Yep. We've got to give the guns up. Yeah. God bless. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Shout on, pray on, we're gaining ground. Glory, hallelujah, the dead's alive and the lost is found. Glory.